Hey guys, it's Max. Today I am reviewing the Moza Air Gimbal. Hopefully that shot was cool. So first, let's start off by opening up and taking a look at the parts. I do want to mention that this is not the new Moza Air Cross, which I just got in the mail. Um, this is the one that supports more weight. It's a little bit more expensive, whereas this guy is kind of a smaller version that only costs $419. I'm very excited to open this guy up, but this video is not about that. If you want to see the review of this one, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. I hopefully have a wedding coming up here in a couple of weeks, and I can get, use this gimbal and go out and shoot and get a bunch of cool footage. Unfortunately, right now in Spokane, it is really cold, really gray, raining, slush. So it's, I didn't get a bunch of time to go out and shoot cool footage. I tested the gimbal out, uh, but I didn't get a bunch of footage like I usually do, especially when doing gimbal stuff where I can go shoot two, three, four weddings. But still, I got a good amount of experience with this gimbal, and it really is an excellent value. This review is going to be a little bit more simple. If you want to see something very detailed, Tom Mantos did a really cool comparison. I'm going to put a link to that in the video description. If you have a half hour to watch a video like that, definitely go and check it out. So here we have the main unit. Uh, it is metallic. The build quality is quite nice. One thing I really like is they have like this soft finish on the metal, so it doesn't get as cold, and which sucks when I'm shooting outside <laughs> on something else. But it does feel quite nice. Now, one standout feature with the Moza Air is how much accessories you get. So I guess it's not a feature, but you get so much with a gimbal. Starting off with a little mini tripod foot. Now, this is nice to balance your camera on the gimbal. It makes it so much easier. I'm not used to having one, and it's great to have one. You get three batteries with it, along with the charger, of course. Uh, the battery life used to be rated at eight hours. Now they're rating it at 12, so I'm not sure what exactly changed. Maybe they just underrated it. Um, for just in my experience, the battery life is way better than you really need. I can go out and shoot a whole wedding, uh, not with this one, but with other gimbals that are rated for, say, six hours. So I use this gimbal with the A7R 3 and that worked quite well with a few different lenses. Here we have the battery charger, which is quite large. It supports four batteries, even though you only need three and it only comes with three. One thing I do like is that the USB cable uh, kind of wraps and stays together with the unit so you can get it out of the way and you never forget your charging cable. So these are for connecting your camera to the gimbal itself. So if you have a Sony camera, you can connect uh, the cable to the camera, to the gimbal on the side here, and then you could start and stop recording with the controls on the front instead of having to actually touch the camera itself. So that is quite nice. Now we have a thumbstick controller, and you might be asking why do you need a controller when you have your controls here? That's because this guy, surprisingly for the price point that it comes in at, which there's uh, all the links in the video description, comes with a dual handle kit. So this goes around here, mounts up, and then you add these handles right here. So of course, if you have dual handles and you're holding it like a traditional gimbal, uh, you're not gonna have the controls. So that's where you can mount this guy and have all your controls back. So that is very nice. And like I said, this is really surprising for a gimbal that's $599 at the time of me making this video that supports this much weight to come with dual handles. That's impressive because if you're buying an alternative, say like the cranes that I've been using for a couple of years, uh, this guy was 650. Now they're selling it for 550. It doesn't hold as much weight. And if you want dual handles, it's an additional $100 to buy the dual handles. We have a uh, mount for heavy lenses. I've never used these before because if you're going to have a lens that needs to have a support, then it's just too, hand too heavy for a single-handed gimbal. And lastly, I have a monitor mount. So uh, this just allows you to mount different accessories. Now on the front here, we have our standard controls. And one thing we don't have is our power zoom lever like we do on the crane gimbals. Not a huge deal for me. I don't use power zoom lenses. Usually those are like F4 or F5.6 lenses and they're not very sharp. So uh, all of my lenses, none of them really have that. So I don't miss it. And I typically don't zoom while I'm in the middle of a shot. Uh, if I need to change my framing, I'll zoom in or I'll adjust where I'm at, my position, and then I'll shoot. So that may be a big deal to you. If you do use those lenses, definitely keep that in mind. One thing I do like is that we have a threaded hole here. So if you have, let's say like this little tripod at the bottom, you're still able to mount a microphone or a monitor or something else uh, with this mount here. So that's very nice. Let's go ahead and balance a camera on here. I'll grab my GH5 and I'll talk about kind of balancing and my experience in that aspect. 
So it is a little bit more sensitive, at least it seems like it to me, uh, when you're balancing a camera on here. Now I am very used to the cranes, I've been using those for a couple of years now, so maybe I'm just quicker with those, uh, but what it seems like is when you're adjusting uh, the the axis here, it's more sensitive. So you have to do finer increments. So you could go a little bit too much where it's a little bit too right heavy and then a little bit too left heavy and you really have to get that balance down. So let's see how I do with the GH5 here. So one thing I did find uh, on top of just balancing the camera is I did have to calibrate it out of the factory and I did have to go into the settings and adjust kind of like the profile and the weight of the camera. So there's a preset for like a Panasonic GH camera, preset for Sony Alpha cameras, for Canon cameras. That's something I didn't have to do with the crane, it just figured it out and did it. So you are gonna spend a little bit more time to, you know, to balance and to get that set up, but it really wasn't too difficult uh, compared to the earlier gimbals where you had to download a pro desktop program, connect it, tweak all these crazy settings and you kind of needed to have, be a genius or something to get that set up. There we go. We're balanced. Let's turn the sucker on. We're good. <laughs> so overall the performance, once it was balanced and calibrated, was really quite good. And of course we have an app like many other gimbals. The app's called Moza Assistant. One thing that I really liked is how quick it connected. I didn't have to go to like Bluetooth and find it. The app just found uh, the gimbal connected quickly and I can see the battery level, my, my connection, and I can go in and I can control uh, the gimbal wirelessly. So let's say I can control the horizon here, uh, control the actual full gimbal and tilt and pan and do everything I want to. One thing I found is that uh, the horizon controls are a little bit too sensitive, so it couldn't be hard to do fine adjustments. As you guys can see here, I'm starting to move it and then it just kind of jolts forward. I wish it was a little bit less sensitive in that way. Uh, we could also do like uh, time lapses and uh, go through and tweak the settings like I mentioned I had to do. Uh, good thing it does let you save the profile. So if you have a couple different cameras or you have a camera with a couple different lenses that vary greatly in size and weight, you can tweak it to get the best results and then you can just save that. And as, along with that, you can adjust like how sensitive it is if you're doing the follow mode. Uh, so very easy to use the app. I like how they have it set up and it works quite well. Other than that little horizon being a little Bit too sensitive. Other than that, I'm very happy with it. Now let's talk about weight. This guy is rated at seven pounds, but I honestly would not want to have seven pounds on here. That's a lot of weight. Even if you have the dual handles, I think there you'd want to have a rig where you have like a backpack or like an exoskeleton set up if you're going to be actually shooting for a while. So I rigged up the C200 on here, and if you guys want to see that review, make sure you guys are subscribed. Put the small HD focus on the side, and unfortunately, it was not able to handle that weight, even though that was under five pounds. It's not because the motors can't handle it, I think the motors can handle that, but there's just not enough range to adjust all the axes to get it balanced properly, and because of that, uh, the motors basically just get overloaded and shut off. And that's not the case just with this gimbal, I think even like the Crane 2, which is a bigger, more expensive, heavier version, um, it's still, you need a lot more adjustments to get a really good balance on the camera if it's gonna be that heavy and you're gonna be using it. So something like a really high-end dual handle setup, once again with like the tethers that they have um, to be shooting with a system like that. So with this guy, I would say roughly, I don't know, maybe four-ish pounds that you'd wanna use on it if you wanna get the best stable footage. On the Zhiyun Crane, which I've used for a long time, this guy's rated for 3.9 pounds but I would say you want to be under three pounds if you want really nice smooth footage. Uh, on this guy, I would not use the 24 to 70 2.8 G Master or the 16 to 35 2.8 G Master, those heavier, longer lenses. But this guy, the Moza Air, will definitely handle it. It has more room for adjustments on all the axes, and it can handle more weight as well. So if you want to use a Sony with one of those full frame, really nice, heavier lenses, this would definitely be the better choice for you. So overall, the Moza Air definitely makes it to my short list of recommended gimbals. If you want something that can handle a little bit more weight or can handle longer lenses. If you want to use those G Master lenses with the Sony body, I would suggest this over like a Crane V2. Um, I would say that you're going to spend a little bit more time getting it set up and getting, getting it calibrated and doing those profiles than you would on a Crane. Uh, but that's something that you can work through, get it set up, and then be able to go out and shoot. And it's nothing like these setups used to be when these single handed gimbals came out. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, you guys can ask in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. Once again, I will have a review of this super 
low price with also great features, Moza Aircross coming out in the future. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you guys don't miss out on that video. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.